Hey everyone, thank you for joining us. I'm Lisa, this is Caitlin. We've been friends for a hundred years and one of the important parts of our friendship that really just, you know, creates that undying bond is our love of holiday movies, specifically like really bad ones, like bad TV holiday movies. And probably for like, what, how many years, Caitlin, have we talked about doing a podcast? Like a hundred years. But like a hundred years. As long as our friendship. <laughs> as long as our friendship. The second we met each other, we're like, podcast? Let's do it. Let's do that. Um, and it's not even like a like a real podcast. This is a limited run series. You know, it's kind of like that OJ show. It was only like eight episodes or something. Um, and uh, from now until Christmas time, and we're going to talk about the greatest holiday movies that are dropping on the Netflix and Hulu and Hallmark. I mean, obviously, we're not going to watch every single one because there's going to be like a hundred. Hey, anytime we need to mention a number, we're just going to say hundred. Okay. I, I think I got that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're obviously not going to watch all of them, but we're going to watch all the big ones and we're going to discuss it. And hey, if you out there in Couchland want to join our club, then, you know, cozy on up. Grab a glass of wine or a hot cup of cocoa with a with so many marshmallows in it that the ratio's just off. You know, just like fill up the mug like a third with hot cocoa and then just all the rest with marshmallows as the like a hundred marshmallows, um, and then join us for some holiday movie discussion. So before we dive into our first movie, Lisa, the real question mm-hmm. is, are you a tiny marshmallows person in your hot cocoa or are you full size? You know, I got to go tiny because you can just like with the tiny ones, you can just cram so many more in there. Like, what do you do with the big ones? Right. There's just you can get like three, maybe four in there. Yeah, and I don't I think know. Maybe just, I'm missing out. I I'm with you, tiny all the way, because I think the big ones it just like expands, and then you have a marshmallow layer, and then you can't get to the cocoa. You need yeah, the mixing. And, you need exactly, the mixing. and then you have just a cocoa absorbed marshmallow that you then eat with a fork and knife. God, what is that from? Is that from The Simpsons? That's from something. I don't remember uh, what it is. I don't know. There's so many Simpsons episodes, so it could be Simpsons did it. Yeah, but before we begin, I first want to hear from you caitlin i want to know your favorite holiday movies good or bad the good the good ones we call films and the (laughs) mediocre ones we could just call movies talkies whatever talkies (laughs) questionable tell me tell me about your love of holiday movies okay so no judgment no judgment here every year i always at least watch the holiday which i think is a feel good classic you can always find it on tv it just feels good uh, great soundtrack great theme great just like good acting uh i think it's also re- it was a movie that surprised me when i first saw it because you wouldn't think of jack black as a love interest but he really nailed right. that part which i totally. think was awesome um so and that was even before i moved to california and now that i live in like la it it resonates so much more for me. Now uh, you know about the Santa Anas. You the didn't Santa know about Anas, those man, before. dude. Yeah, they've been they've been a uh, little, let's say, uh, rambunctious the past little, couple weeks. A little raging. Got yeah, raging uh, Santa Anas. Um, of course, Love Actually. Love Actually is probably one of my favorite movies of all time, not just holiday. So that one definitely has to go out there. I love me some good British humor. I know you do too, Lisa. Oh, of course. Um, and it's a good ensemble cast. Once again, it's like the feel-good theme. This is probably going to be a common thing across all holiday movies. You just want to feel good. You just want to chill back, relax. Um, I'm trying to think what else I watch around the holidays. Not a movie, but I always start playing. Come on, you know know Christmas Prince is just one of your (laughs) all-time favorites. It's a classic, Caitlin. Uh, I don't don't know if Christmas Prince would be the one that I'm like, we should, I mean, if, if we were watching it together, yes. Watching it with friends. Yes. Uh, I don't think it'd be my go-to, like, holiday, like, yes, we must watch it. Um, I'm trying to think what it is. Oh, I am excited for this year. I don't know if this is skipping ahead to segments you had planned, but I am excited for the sequel to the Vanessa Hudgens holiday movie. Not The what? Night, but the one where she's the, um, she has the doppelganger, and now there's a third. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so here's the problem. So I never watched that one, but I know exactly what you're talking about. And it was on my list and I never got around to it. I did watch the night one, though, because, of course, you know, medieval <laughs> time travel tomfoolery. Oh my God, of course, the, the I'm plot there holes, that. The plot holes in that movie were, I think it was a fun one to watch last year, but it was just so ridiculous. So also, ridiculous. I, I am proud that you have so much faith in me that you think I have segments planned. I definitely <laughs> do not have any segments planned. Okay. Um, the, the other one I like is, uh, what is it? The 12 Dates of uh, Christmas? Kaylin, you're stealing all of mine. <laughs> I spritzed you and you passed out. <laughs> that one's just a fun romp. <laughs> if you steal my next two, I'm going to be so pissed at you. Okay. okay. Oh, all right. Well, I, I think I've given enough. Now let's toss it to you. Okay. You've given enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so similar to you, uh, I would say the holiday might be my favorite rom-com of all time, even outside of Christmas. Like I genuinely, one. I think I cry every single time I watch this movie. I have to watch it every year. It's fantastic. Like you said, the soundtrack, the acting, Kate Winslet's speech at the end. Oh, it's just, it, it, it hits me so hard. And yeah, and Love Actually is also up there. I think for you, you're probably like Love Actually a little bit higher than The Holiday. And I'm probably like the opposite. Like I'm probably Holiday like a little bit of Love Actually, but we're just like, you know, we're splitting hairs here. Um, but that's why we're friends, you know, for all these hundred years because of, you know, our shared love of these movies. And also, yes, 12 Dates of Christmas starring Zach Morris and... Amy Smart? Is that yes. her name? I'm pretty uh, sure it is. I think you nailed yes. it. <laughs> okay. The, the chick from Just Friends with Ryan, with Ryan Reynolds, right? Is that the movie she's in? I think uh, so. I'm pretty okay. sure that's her. Okay, hold Probably on. Probably is, yeah. She's also in um, The Butterfly Effect. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's, um, she's got like an interesting acting style, which I really dig. Yeah. I think that's her. Um, but yeah, okay, so The 12 Dates of Christmas is fantastic. Obviously, massive ripoff of Groundhog Day, but it's okay because Groundhog Day is one of the greatest comedies of all time, probably top five of all time, and I will fight anyone who tries to tell me otherwise. Um, so it's okay that we steal that premise. There's lots of movies that steal that premise, like Russian Doll on Netflix. I didn't watch it, but I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, I like to talk about things like I know them, even though I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, you should watch Russian Doll. You'll like that. I, I know it's on, that's like the classic Netflix answer of like, it's on my list. Like I'm gonna, it's, it's, on, my, it's, it's, on, it's my on my queue. I still like queue better than list, but. Q, um, Q, Q is more British and that's more us, even though we're not in, British. We appreciate like the Q. Brits. We've yes. seen so many episodes of Great British Bake Off that we're practically British. Yeah. And uh, another one I like is Melissa Joan Hart's Holiday in Handcuffs. That was going to be the other one I would say. <laughs> <laughs> with Mr. Mario Lopez. Oh, I really like yeah. my holiday movies to have at least one cast member from Saved by the Bell in them. <laughs> okay, fair. Fair. And then there's another one. God, I get, it's starring um, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And oh. it's called like Home for Christmas or something like yeah, that. Do you remember yeah. this one? He's like at school and then he's like, you know... Like a so punk, kind of like d rebels, like doesn't listen to his parents, like does his own thing, and then shenanigans, and then has to hitchhike home for Christmas. I don't know, something like that. But anyway, I love it. It's one yeah. of my favorites. Okay, so <laughs> I, I can't tell you the plot. I think I have one that I have not seen. I remember the trailer, and I remember being a big uh, JTT fan, but I don't think I've ever actually seen it. I'll have to watch it. Hopefully, it's on Disney Plus. It's great, and also. Tell me a female who was not a big JTT fan. I mean, come yeah. on, come on. I was, I was a denier in public. I was like, I'm too cool. I don't like him. And then in secret, I was like, Oh yeah, he's so hot. <laughs> I wonder what he's up to now. Why is he not doing more holiday movies? Right. He looks like Val Kilmer a lot. He could have been in Top right? Gun remake then. Oh, he totally should have. <gasps> he could have been cast. We he could have been Iceman's son. If we're going to have Goose's son, let's throw in Iceman's son. Right. Exactly. Oh, that would have been epic. Um, yes, Top Gun, also a good movie. Not a holiday movie. Not like Die Hard. <laughs> no. Which we, ag we agree Die Hard's a holiday movie, right? Oh, There's always totally, that debate. Totally. Yeah, we're just going to get that get that out there right now so that anybody who doesn't agree can just stop listening immediately <laughs> doesn't need to stick around for the next seven episodes they're like we they're like what movie are you guys been talking about <laughs> okay so let's jump in to tonight's subject matter so we are right it's J caitlin it's november in fact yep. 
Yeah. The day that we're recording this is election day and we're distracting ourselves with this podcast because we don't know who won. And when we publish this, we will all know who won and whatever. Chaos. It's fine. Everything's fine. But right now we're talking about fun holiday movies. It's the beginning of November. Not quite into the giant release of all of the Christmas movies yet, right? Like we're just starting. Netflix just dropped the first one called Holiday, starring Emma Roberts and... An Australian man who I should have gotten the name of, but didn't. I think it's Luke Bradley. Okay, that sounds right. All right, all right. Let's let me, go let with me that. See, We're uh, gonna so disrespectful. <laughs> let's look it up. Oh, Luke Bracy. Okay, Luke Bra- Luke Bracy. I was yeah, I was in was the ballpark. Phenomenal. I got we're on first name braces. I don't know his last name. Yeah, Luke Lukey, which is funny because the an- wasn't the the antagonist guy. I mean, the ex-boyfriend in the Luke. movie. His name was yeah. Luke? Luke. Yeah. Luke. I guess Luke. I don't it that way. Um, so, we're, it's the first Christmas movie that's been dropped by Netflix. It's, like, number one in the top ten of Netflix, which I think is BS. But, you know, I'm sure yeah. they're just kind of like... Honestly, okay. I'm super surprised that they dropped it so early and they didn't save mm-hmm. it. But they've already dropped another Netflix trailer for another Christmas movie that's coming up. And so I think Netflix is just sitting on a bunch of them that they're just going to keep churning them out every couple weeks. Which they is better be. Which they is pretty be. exciting. Because I think we only had a handful last year. So if we're getting, like, six... I mean, this is great. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I agree. The more, the more, the merrier. Yes. Uh huh. Uh, it's, it's Christmassy when I say that. Um. Okay. So, what's the trailer for the? Before we jump into holiday, what's the trailer for the new one that you're just talking about? It's called Over Christmas. Ooh. I okay. I'm gonna guess what the plot is. It's gonna be starring a girl who has just had so many rotten Christmases that she's over it, and. It takes a charming stranger to change her mind. And in the end, she experiences joy having changed. All right. So it's... <laughs> You're Sounds at the so unimpressed. You're but just like go with sitting the... there waiting for me to finish. <laughs> just uh, like, okay, is she done? But I'm going to go with the one sentence description so we don't read yes. the paragraph that's on Netflix. I mean, on Netflix's YouTube. All right. Down and out musician Bastian battles the holiday blues as he returns home for Christmas and encounters a, seri- a series of not so cheery surprises. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's a dude instead yeah. of a chick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's yeah, apparently okay. a musician and he goes by nice. Basti instead of Bastian. But all right. Ah. I think what it might be. Mag- ma- magician. What kind of musician? Magician would have been more interesting. Oh, also, I think it's one of those. Um, it's a holiday movie that's in a different language that has the subtitles on it. Uh, okay, that's fine, but I don't know if I can sit, sit through it. There was it another, looks super European. Another show. I'm here for it. Yeah, there's like another show that looks really Christmassy and fun on Netflix, and I really wanted to watch it, but it's it's English subtitles only, and I'm one of those like total losers that like I'll I won't be able to pay attention. I'm sure you can because you're an intellectual, and I'm not. I'm I'm dumb, so I will just you know. I'll wander. I'll grab my phone every five seconds. In the I, I, I didn't, I didn't read for the last five minutes. What happened? Oh, actually, also, I watch subtitles to go to sleep to it because I find breathing soothing. Oh. Fun facts. Yeah. All I right. just, like, endlessly scroll social media until I'm so sad that I can't be awake anymore, and then I fall asleep. <laughs> okay, that's, like, the saddest way to go to sleep. <laughs> right? I'm very sad. And no, I'm I mean... not. I'm very happy. I'm a very energetic, happy person in general. Okay. okay, so let's Kaylin. talk about Holiday. Yes, so, let's talk about it. Jump all right, right do you want to give a one-sentence d- recap of what a holiday even is? Did you know what a holiday was before we watched this movie? I did not, but thanks to Kristen Chenoweth, who we love dearly, very yes. talented She's woman. a gift in this movie. She is. She is the probably the best part of this movie. She tells us, she's like the, the crazy old aunt um, who explains to sad single Emma Roberts that a holiday is just a meaningless relationship with a with a man uh, where they only date each other on holidays so that they have someone to go to parties with and hang out with, but they don't. There's no, you know, no strings attached. It's there's no no feelings. It's all just let's hang out for the holidays so that we have we're not alone and sad, uh, and then go our separate ways. Yeah. And Did like I, I think, it right? and I, yeah, and I think like the thing I think I, I think we've all gotten is like to get your family off your back. 
Like, I think we've all gone to a Thanksgiving or Christmas or something else, and everyone's like, when are you going to get a boyfriend? What's this person? Oh, who's that? Blah, blah, blah. You, we all have those relatives. And so that's where it comes into play is it's, like, all around family gatherings. The concept of the holiday, though, is, like, I thought it would be more of, like, the aunt explaining it to Emma Roberts, and it's, like, their shared, like, secret almost. But mm. everyone in the family is in on what a holiday is. Yeah, everyone knows. Yeah, everyone Which I was it. like, oh, well, uh, this is less fun. I thought it would be way more fun if they kind of kept it more like flying under the radar or like a big reveal at some point about like, oh, actually, he's he is a holiday. The, our main love interest uh, is a holiday, not actually with her. And there'd be like a big moment. But everyone's in on the secret. Yeah, that, I think that would have been a better approach, actually. Um, but in general... Um, yeah, okay, so that's like, that's what a holiday is. And then the movie follows our hero, Sloane, who is Emma Roberts, and she's like 29, she's like almost 30, and yeah, she goes to these family gatherings, Christmas, and they're all like, honey, when are you gonna get married, and blah, 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 you're like, your little brother is getting married, and your older sister is married and four kids, and, you know, she's sitting at the kids' table, and you know, the typical lead of a Christmas movie. Like, everything's falling into place for this to be a classic holiday film M- movie i can't say film oh god okay um and then on the other side of that you have the male lead whose jackson. name is jackson thank you caitlin um and he is experiencing something similar he's like uh, with a, a really clingy girlfriend uh and her family at christmas and it's like just too much he's like uh, you know girls go mental i think that's what he says girls go mental during christmas and so they ran Emma and Jackson, the, <laughs> what are the, Sloan and Sloan. Jackson? Sloan and Sloan Jackson. and Jackson. They meet at the mall um, in sort of a, sort of like an angry meet cute. It's kind of a, a meet uncute. You know, they're like waiting in line and she's angry at him and like, hurry up with your purchase. There's people who have to go to work here. Just like says the most horrible, rude thing that like no one would ever actually say in real life. And then he's like, oh, excuse me. You know, that's, I'm not going to do any kind of accent. And then, you know, they kind of like bicker and then they decide to be each other's holidays. And we go through the entire calendar year of all of the holidays till it loops all the way back to Christmas. Yep. So, yeah, uh, there's the setup. I did enjoy the uh, classic busybody in the line, but also I was like, this woman yes. is crazy. I'm being like, yeah, I'll buy three sizes of khakis that you just happen to have. Why yeah, is she buying really make three different sense. sizes of khakis and giant pajamas? I feel like that scene was maybe an afterthought. To like, how do we solve this problem? problem well, it was just write this i don't know didn't really have anything to i do. was also surprised how much and like some of this is also because covid is happening so there are moments where i'm like oh oh no no don't do that um uh, how much takes place in a mall like right. how often do you actually go to a mall and it feels like the jackson is at a mall all the time multiple scenes take place in a mall you know what's funny even before covid happened uh, I went to a mall recently and I was walking around saying this feels outdated and weird. This feels like the 90s. What are malls still doing here? And I'm pretty sure most malls are still closed, right? Kaylin, tell me. Yeah. Are they? Most okay. of them are yeah. probably. Unless they're, they're like gonna... outdoor. Right. Are they going to recover? I mean. I, probably not. I mean, I think a lot go of to them the mall. Are... Yeah. People go to the mall for what? Uh, Victoria's Secret? Bath and Body Works? Uh, Spencer's? Gifts? Yeah, but Hot you topic. can all get online. You all get online. Hot Topic and maybe Cinnabon, which you can't get online. Cinnabon, Cinnabon, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Um, but you can get it at an airport. <laughs> well, not right now, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with it. But I think like the fact that they had the uh, – so much of this movie takes place in the mall. And then my other question was going to be is the occupations of our two main characters. So, like – Emma Roberts works from home. She gets a lot of criticism because she works from home and her mom criticizes for what she's wearing. But what does she actually do? Well, we don't know. We don't know. Not important to the plot. On top of it, the other question I was going to have is like Jackson, who is a pro golfer. Is he actually a pro golfer? Or is that something (laughs) he puts on his card to pick up women and he's just a golf teacher? Because what pro golfer lives in Chicago? I feel like if you're a pro golfer, you want to be in like Texas. If you want to be in Florida. 
This is a really good point that I had not thought of because you're right. Their occupations had nothing to do with the plot really at all. I don't think. I mean, other than he was like, oh, I'm a professional athlete, so I don't eat junk. And she has the uh, the Gilmore syndrome where she eats all the junk and is like super skinny and she can't get right. gunk, uh, junk food. So, OK, so here's my here's the thing. First, I would like to say that I did enjoy this movie, that I did like it because I like holiday films. I don't care how bad bad they I mean they have the holiday movies have to be really really bad for me to not watch them because it's a guilty pleasure and that's why this podcast goes against everything I believe in because usually I watch these movies by myself and I don't tell anyone but Caitlin that I'm doing it and just kind of secretly enjoy it um but here I am telling the whole world that's fine it's great you know I feel liberated but uh I did enjoy this movie there's a couple things that kind of like uh, were off-putting to me. Yes. And I would say that it was very vulgar, like, right off the bat. I was so surprised, because, like, <laughs> I, I I should have rewatched the trailer before we recorded this, so that's on me, but from when I showed us we watched the trailer, like, what, a month ago, you didn't get that it was going to be that vulgar. No. But I was surprised at how funny it was, like, right off the bat, and how fun it was. Like, same with you. I enjoyed the movie, but there were some off-putting parts, and, like, the vulgarness, especially where it goes to, like, 0 to 60 very, very quickly. It really like, does. So really quickly. <laughs> so quickly. Like, just just right out of the gate. And, look, I'm not I'm not a prude. I watch no. Scorsese films. I, I'm fine with all that. But I do like my feel good movies to be feel good and so those moments of just pure you know filth smut (laughs) they just kind of uh, don't really like it and it's funny because I just a huge pet peeve of mine and I think this is because I was a child actor for so many years and maybe because I I just got to know so many kid actors and I saw so many of them actually screw up their lives and just be horrible people you know in in real life um delightful on the screen but just like you know weird people in real life um i really don't like it when movies have kids say the f word and have them curse it really drives me insane and the last two movies i watched had kids doing that i just watched bad mom's christmas which i'd never seen oh no, i haven't and seen it either yeah, it's yeah, yeah, maybe it's, uh, and then holidays, which also had it, and I was just like, "Come on, don't make." I know that you think it's funny as like an adult screenwriter to be like, "Oh, I'm gonna make this kid drop the f word," but like they're innocent kid actors. Please don't make them do that. <laughs> they have plenty of time to screw up their life. Please don't make them do it. So I really didn't like that they had the kids say the f word. And then really, my only other big gripe is that she was. She, she didn't really have too many redeeming qualities. I found him really likable, and I found her really not likable. Like, uh, she didn't really have any of those fun quirks that make you be like, oh, I'm on your side no matter what happens. Kind of the whole time I was just like, eh, you're, uh, I don't know yeah. I like you though. I don't know if I like it that much. Agreed. Agreed. Especially because, like, the way she treated everyone else, like, when they're, like, uh, what is it? They were, like, wedding invitation shopping or whatever, and she just rolls up in pajamas and that gets mad at everyone and storms off and it's just like come come on every you're supposed to be, you're here with your sister you're here with your future sister-in-law like you know I, you don't have to necessarily put on your it's all about the future sister-in-law and her day you know yeah. put on your happy face and help her out uh or the um when she runs into for uh not Farouk what is it Luke and Luke. Felicity Luke. The new love interest, which was like, I was like, wait, so is she the one that he left her for? But that was a barista named Rainbow. So Mm. I was like, okay, so who's this new chick? On top of it, I also thought it was kind of funny that she gets super upset that the new chick is like supposed to be super young. So young! Emma Roberts. And I was like, Emma Roberts looks younger. (laughs) That's what I was thinking all the time. I'm like, wait, Emma, you look younger than her. Same! Same. And so I think, like, or, you know, she had some moments that were, like, like when they go to the New Year's party, and they're all having a great time, and they're bonding, and I'm like, okay, we're starting to get there. And then it just goes downhill, because she's like, no, I don't want to hang out with you on Valentine's Day. Ugh. And you're just like, well, why not? Get some free candy. Right. I feel like Judd Apatow movies are, they, are, they so perfectly portray loser characters 
in very likable ways. You know what yes. I mean? Like they have his movies have all these characters who are just complete bums, like you know, potheads, burnouts. But he gives them these quirks and this these funny lines to say, you know, these qualities that are redeeming and you just kind of get behind them the whole time and that was just the only thing I feel like was missing from her character is that like I I just didn't really care if she won or lost in the end like for Jackson, is that something? Yeah, Jackson. Jackson. yeah yeah like I wanted Jackson to find happiness because he was pretty likable and fun but she just kind of I mean and Jackson yeah. had his friend and he was like his fellow mm-hmm. like player buddy um but like where was Emma Roberts friend where was Emma Roberts's like we don't even know what she did other than she Caitlin, where's the gal pal? We need yeah, a gal sure. pal. <laughs> also, I gotta say, Jackson's apartment was like the nicest apartment I've ever seen in a Christmas movie. And like her really apartment nice. was like, I was like, wait a minute. Oh, that was her apartment that they woke up in, not his, which was like eclectic and random. Like she doesn't even have like the nice apartment. She doesn't have a job. Like we, do we know she's good at her job? Do we not? Like there's. What's redeeming about her? She just kind of seemed like a so lot of the time she was such a brat. Questions. She just seemed like a brat, honestly. Like I yeah, get her no, mom was did. overbearing, but like the whole Mother's Day scene was just right. I didn't like weird. it. Yeah, I, it was I was weird. not into it. Also, on top of it, that she was also like her quirk was she was a bad driver. Right. Yeah, that's not really a quirk. Yeah, I'm kind of a bad driver. <laughs> Yeah, but you also could drive to the hospital going 35 miles per hour if you needed to. On top of it, why didn't they call an Uber when they throw do that throwaway line? I was like, they're like, they never say anything. Like, they could have. Why didn't they? Was there no cell service? Like, Caitlin, I just walked out to my car the other day in the parking lot from picking up my kid from school. And there was a whole section of my of like the body of my car that was just hanging down <laughs> on the road <laughs> i'm like i don't remember that happening so oh you know God. maybe i'm not the maybe i'm not the best driver but yes eh. also the I, I think the other thing like the firecracker scene just like threw me off too because it's like okay i, I get it they're having fun at fourth of july whatever and then he blows off his finger and i was just like why did we even need this <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny but yeah. i agree well, um, I was also like the whole time I was like, why is Farouk not at the uh, the Fourth of July barbecue? And guess where he was at the hospital, ready to reattach the finger. Yep, he was there, ready for them fingers. I yes. do have to say that the Easter scene made me raffle. It oh, was same. the best scene with those kids. I move, <laughs> get out the way. I say, they paid a lot of. They had to pay a lot of money for music licensing because they got boys to men in there. They had the time uh, of my bitch. life. Yep. And I don't Tequila. Yeah. Um, I got some jams. I will say, like, look, if you're going to have a rom-com, you got to have an 80s dance number, you know? I mean, it was a great 80s that. dance number, but it was also very bizarre when she bizarre. walks into... Also, like, why did we not have this as, like, a pull-through if so, you're going to give your dress to some random girl who has spilt wine on it so she can have a perfect, perfect proposal... You better be invited to that wedding. Okay, here was my biggest problem with the whole movie probably was this part. Um, Because, so she comes out of, like, she does a nice thing, right? So she switches dresses with this crying girl. And she comes out and she's got this white dress on. And it fits her perfectly, obviously. And it's got just, like, wine spilled all over it. And then Jackson's like, what happened? And she's like, don't ask. And then she sits down. And I'm like, no way. If that happened to me, I'd be like, oh, my God. You got to hear what just happened. This is the best story. This is yeah. hilarious. <laughs> why Why is that not a story? On top of it, the, from the start, from the New Year's party where they finally hang out, like, Jackson's doing these nice, thoughtful things. Like, oh, you've always wanted to do the Dirty Dance number? We're going to do it. Let's bond about the Ryan Gosling uh, train, which is a theme through the right. entire movie like he's just mm-hmm. very thoughtful the entire time on top of it i also thought it was questionable and i don't know uh science lisa if you pour if something catches on fire and you pour champagne on it does it make it go out or does it make it worse hmm is the alcohol i wish we, call could, it I wish we could throw to dr smart brain and have a scientist on hand for these type of questions but i don't know you're talking to the do you not remember when we were living in portland and i set my condo on fire do you not remember this <laughs> so what happened but was you, you didn't throw champagne on it so we don't know uh we don't know. I, I think i did something dumber 
So I had this tiny, I was going to make wontons, right? Which is a great beginner dish for somebody who doesn't know how to cook. Oh, yeah. Um, I take the smallest little pan and I fill it to the brim with oil. And then I turn it on high. This was like 10 years ago, okay? So don't judge me. Actually, you can judge me. It's fine. And I'm waiting for it to boil. I'm like, why is my oil not boiling? I guess it doesn't really do a rolling boil as water does. And so I decide to drop in a wonton anyway to see what will happen. It's the oil spills over the side and catches fire. And it's a lot of fire. It's so much fire. And all of my smoke alarms start going off and there's smoke everywhere. I grab my fire extinguisher from under my sink because my parents knew that I would need it. Thank God. <laughs> They're like, ah, we better get you a fire extinguisher from Costco, the big one. And I tried to put out the fire with the extinguisher. I had it pointed the wrong way. So I first coated myself with the white stuff. And then I turned it around and then just used the entire extinguisher on my entire kitchen until the fire went out. And then every smoke alarm in the entire building was going off. It was a proud moment. Cooking with Lisa is our next episode. Mm -hmm. Our spinoff yes. series. <laughs> Don't do what I did, basically. Yes. Hey, it, it shows the importance. The Always have a fire extinguisher. Always exactly. have a fire extinguisher. Costco size. Yes. Yes. So, what more? What thoughts do you have? The other on, thing I thought was like, this? so let's. I think let's focus on like, okay, so we see it through as you said. We see their dates over the course of the year. Um, at the New Year's party, the other thing I thought was interesting was like, okay, so the the woman is about to get proposed to. Wouldn't she be more mad that this dirty dancing moment has happened in front of her and would take away oh, totally. from her moment? Like, yeah, and they stealing just her thunder. Skate right over it. The other thing I thought was interesting was the um, was the uh, who leaves just right before midnight. You're at a new right. party. Yes, Everybody He's like, knows what does he have to go to the bathroom? About to happen. Right. Yeah, that was a little. That was a little but, weird. He's yeah. Like, oh, I gotta go. Did he just, wait? You just go to the bathroom? I forget. Yeah, I think he went to the bathroom and he was like, oh, okay. sorry. And then he gave, like, the cute kiss on the cheek. And I thought that was right. horrible. But, like, oh, it, it's 11.58. Best time to go to the bathroom right now. <laughs> but going to a New Year's party, I get. Like, it's super awkward to go by yourself. And hence why you would want a date. Because midnight comes and everyone's coupled up. And if you're the only one there, you're just kind of like, all right. I guess I'll be over here while everyone is, like, ringing in the New Year's. So it's like, okay, it makes sense that you would want someone to be there. Mm -hmm. But he's not even there for the key moment and why you go to right. a New Year's party. What's the point in having a holiday if the date is not there for the midnight? Yeah, I'm with you, Caitlin. I, I'm, I'm there. Yeah. And so I also think, so then we fast forward to Valentine's Day. Unless you have anything yeah. else to bring on about uh, New Year's. Oh, uh... I <laughs> <laughs> I did enjoy how they just went super meta and started talking about how much they hate romantic comedies. Because we're in one. Ah, oh, I see uh, what they did. They're making fun of the thing that they're doing. Gotcha. I mean, yeah. I, I did enjoy that. It, I thought it was too... I always like it more when it's like a wink to the audience. Or right. I think the same thing with like the vulgarity and like the humor. Like it's more of a wink. Like make it more of a two. Yeah. Like it's more subtle or under the radar. I think they just went full pedal of the metal that they're yes. like yep this is what it is uh, obviously you have you out there in the audience have watched this movie before you've listened to this episode because it's like full of spoilers like you should know by now if you're gonna watch a podcast episode about a movie like you should watch that movie first um uh, but you uh if you haven't watched the movie then you will know exactly what we're talking about when we say <laughs> the vulgarity hits you right out of the gate Yes, I think uh, next time we gotta do and the she spoiler. Says it right in, she says it right in front of her parents. Like, who says know. that in front of her parents? Who says that in front of her parents? Or like when the proposal happens at Christmas, when her younger brother proposes to his girlfriend, which kicks off the chain of events. Uh, and that who yells, two down, one to go? <laughs> Their kid gets right. engaged. Right. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and so then, uh, so then they we fast forward to Valentine's Day. We're at the mall again, and she's helping pick out wedding invitations as we talked about before. She gets annoyed. She storms off, goes to the candy store, where she runs into the big X, Luke, Luke. and Luke. Felicity. Uh, not to be confused with the barista that she claims that he left her for. Um, 
So also totally something from COVID, but I think them sharing a lari- lollipop was like so disgusting. Isn't it so weird how because this year has just been, you know, a giant whirlpool of endless hor- horribleness that uh, we just see scenes like that. And we're just like, oh, you can't do that. Like we're, oh, yeah. we're now so conditioned to see, you know, party scenes and stuff like that. Just like, oh, you can't do that. It's against the law. Don't do Don't that. Do that. Wear a mask. Do what that. are you doing? Ah! Ah! Don't do that. Um, and then the, so then they have that, they have the run in, um, and then good old Jackson just happens to be in the mall, comes to the candy store, pretends they're together, has their back, which I thought was very cute. Are malls a big thing in Australia? Is that why he's always at the mall in America? So, As well, this is a real question. I know it was like, is there a golf store at the mall? And that's why, why is he's he there, there so much? Is there one of those virtual driving ranges that we see him golfing at once that's at the mall? And that explains why he's always there. Does he teach? I will avoid the mall at all costs. And like, he's there constantly. Is there a top golf attached to it where he works mm. on the weekends and helps people? Like, I just don't get why he's at the mall constantly. There's no reason. Especially because if he is supposed to be this health nut athlete, doesn't want anything bad in his body. What What are you drinking at the mall? Or what are you eating at the mall that is good for right. you? You can't resist food court, mall food court. You can't do that. You I walk mean, past that smell and you're like, ah, I need four tacos, some Chinese food, and a Cinnabon right now. Yeah. I mean, he's drinking a green juice at some point, but I was like, "Ah, I don't know if you get a green juice at the mall. I feel like the green juice from Jamba Juice is probably not that healthy. Jamba. Jamba juice. Yeah. I mean, delicious. In Oregon. God, when I lived in. So backstory, Kaylin and I met in Oregon and we used to live in Portland for many years until we didn't. Uh, But, you know, many Portland shenanigans. And I feel like that was a, was that a big Oregon thing for you and I your think, friends? Yeah. So my I think, cousin would always be like with her girlfriends and be like, "Let's go to Jamba Juice." I'm like, "Okay, why?" But they loved it. Like every couple of days, they'd go. I think they're all over now. But yes, yeah, so Jamba Juice, and then I, um, Orange Julius's. Do you remember those in Oregon as well? Oh, of course I remember Orange Julius. Yeah. They're only in malls, right? They only exist in malls. I think, I think so. It's like hot dog on a stick. <laughs> oh, hot dog on a stick get hungry so i also feel like because this movie is so based on balls why didn't this movie happen in the 90s like if they sent this in the 90s where it's like okay mall culture makes sense you you just change some of the like professions of people like emma roberts obviously is not gonna like telecommute in the 90s you know what that could have worked this being a 90s movie that actually really could have worked hey you saying that reminded me of something i really really appreciated that they didn't rely on any kind of social media in this movie. I hate when movies rely on social media or, like, too much phone stuff. That was one of my biggest gripes with Emily in Paris, is I hated all the social media stuff. Like, I watch TV to get away from that. Yeah. I think it was I also, like... like movies don't have it. I agree with you on Emily in Paris. I think also Emily in Paris, the problem was, too, is, like, the photos she was taking and then being like, oh, look at all my followers. This is great. It's like, okay... Right. It can't take place in present time. It needs to be happening. Like, this should have been happening in, like, 2004. Like, Instagram and, like, social media is just starting to pick up and people are starting to figure it out. Like. Totally. That's the so, time So, I mean, okay. So, it's, like, so Emily in Paris is not a Christmas no. movie or show. So, we're not really going to discuss it in depth. But we can both agree that it was not. Yeah. It was not good. There, there was wasn't a good. lot of. And I think that also helps the movie in some ways because it doesn't age it. Like, mm-hmm. it doesn't, you don't go to, like, a fake Tinder, they they do make a reference to an app, so you know what kind of approximate time it is, and they have their phones, but it's not, like, a major plot point, as you were saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say, overall, I really did enjoy it. I would say I paid more attention to this one than Love Guaranteed. Did you watch Love Guaranteed? I have not watched Love Guaranteed yet. I know you With read Rachel Leacock. N- uh, okay. Here's it. Don't go, don't just tell the world that Lisa's recommending stuff, Caitlin. This stays okay. between you right, and right, our Texas. Right. <laughs> okay. And sometimes here's, we here's... recommend movies to each other that are folding laundry <laughs> movies to right. preface. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, you know, we're very into things like Love is Blind and there are some reality shows. Okay. Love is Blind is like, so, right. Anyway, okay. So um, I would say that Love Guaranteed was really cute at the beginning and the end. The middle is 
not so good. So okay. can I recommend like like sixty percent of it, <laughs> and then That's the part fair. that you don't like, just be like, ah, Lisa didn't recommend that part. I also so, felt like the holiday also started dragging. Like once we got yeah. to like, it was kind of fun it was too long. It was totally, totally got, too long. Totally, totally too, long. too long. We could fast forward. I think like uh, Valentine's Day was fine. Uh, because they reconnect, they start deciding that they're going to do all these holidays together. So we got St. Patrick's Day, where we find out actually the brother knows Jackson, um, and then the sister and them. So we get the dynamic of them starting to interact. But I also thought it was weird that I think on St. Patrick's Day that she explains to her sister that Jackson is a holiday. And so that kind of goes back to, I wish there would have been more of like, peeling back a little bit more of like, okay everyone's in on the holiday concept. Everybody knows what a holiday is and who's a holiday. And I wish there was more like secrecy about what it was. It was like a shared thing between Emma Roberts and Kristen Chenoweth uh, versus a, like everyone's in on it or like, or she was telling her sister in confidence and like, okay, the sister's going to be the one that tells the mom, but the mom already knows. And so Mm -hmm. it was just like, okay, well then what's the point of this? Yeah. So I don't think we're normally going to like hack up one movie as much as we have today. (laughs) We're doing that because it's the only one that's out right now. Like I don't think the other channels have started dropping their holiday movies. And we committed to eight episodes starting the first week of November. So we really only have this one to gripe about. It's true. Right now. It's true. So and I think, you know, I think it falls right in the middle. It's very rare that we get. A Christmas movie that's also a masterpiece, like Love Actually in the Holiday, usually we get these movies that they have obviously thrown together, churned out in three weeks in Canada for a budget of about two million or less. And we're usually fine with it because that's what we like. We like these feel-good, ridiculous movies. I'd say this one was a little bit above average when it comes to plot and acting and budget so i appreciated that so you know i'm gonna say it's a good i would i would recommend it to you all pe- yes. you people who enjoy holiday movies like me and my co-host caitlin yes i would definitely recommend it however i would not say it's a movie to put on at home with the family no like <laughs> no. no even you're like okay if your sibling and you like you watch super bad or other stuff together that's fine probably if you are you have that but like please use caution who you yes. watch this movie with yeah gosh i just hate it i wish there was an unwritten rule that holiday movies just need to be pg like most of the time yes. like i understand like yes. the, you know there's stuff in love actually in the holiday that was a little more risque but nothing like this movie that just hits you with this Eh, very uncomfortable dialogue yes. right at the beginning. Yes. So, yeah, it definitely not a family movie. Well, um, this was a fantastic first episode, and I had fun. And we've been talking about doing this, you know, for the Me last Me too, Lisa. Years. Glad that we finally got around to doing it. And uh, this is just fun getting to hang out and chat with you and drink wine. You Okay, so she has like a Mickey holiday cup. I do. And I have uh, like a wine glass with snowflakes on it. So mine also has you know, snowflakes. All... So we are we are feeling the cheer, nice and early. She has this amazing shade of red lipstick on too. Like she looks really good. I wish you could see. It. Maybe you can you take a screenshot, take a selfie. I, I'll take a and selfie then, like, and send it to you. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna take a selfie because I look horrid. So, but <laughs> before we go, Lisa, we gotta do the typical podcast mm. thing. Anything you wanna plug? Mm. No, follow me on at Lisa Foils. I like how you say pretty much no, everywhere, and then you plug something. <laughs> and buy her book. Lisa wrote a fabulous. Oh book. yeah, buy my book. Yeah, uh, do that too. Yeah, uh, what is it? It's um, what? It's like in the Phoenix. It's like I want to say Ridley Scott yeah. in the Phoenix. <laughs> it's not Ridley Scott, is it? I'm totally butchering the name it of your is book. Not. It is Ash Ridley Ash and Ridley. the Phoenix, and you should buy. It. Oh my God, it's such a good Christmas present. Yes. <gasps> okay, it's a great Christmas present. Yes. So, um, okay, your, your turn. Plug, plug, plug your thing. Uh, so you can follow me on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Kstu Turley, as well as uh, I post a lot of photos of my dog puns. Uh, puns like the joke. Best dog ever. Yes. And, uh, Pug, for- puns will be a co-host in one of these episodes. Oh, I'm sure he will be. He he is looking at me right now, being like, "Why are we not cuddling and watching Netflix?" Uh, also, probably when I got really excited or frustrated, he looked at me like, is everything okay? 
did I do something wrong? Uh, but you can follow Aww. Puns on Instagram at uh, Puns of Damage Frenchie, and uh, you can see the, his latest photo, which he was super banned for Halloween, which I know, Lisa, you were a fan of. Oh my gosh, such a fan. Anything Puns does, I'm a fan of. I'm just a fan of him in general. Yeah. He's the best dog of all time, ever. Aw, oh, thank you. I was going to say, that says a lot considering you have your own dog. Oh, shoot. I do have my own dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Riley is not as fashionable as puns, though. Well. Puns rules. All right. See you, everybody. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.